please like and subscribe. Let's grow NAI basketball. Thank you. Cascade Hoops Talk, bringing the world NAI basketball one podcast at a time. Cascade Hoops Talk, Billy D. Well, it's Friday. Uh, by the time you hear this, I'm going to be on my way. Uh, about a five and a half hour drive. Watch some basketball this weekend. I hope that's what you're planning. Not the five and a half hour drive. But you better be planning on watching some basketball. Boy, there was some great basketball tonight. The season is really starting to heat up. Man, this is really the fun time of year. Everybody's still full of hope. Those uh, conference uh, one loss records start to fill up. And the picture begins to take some shape. Tonight, we're going to go through all the action, look at the conferences as we've been doing. And we're also going to talk to Anthony Monson. He's the head men's basketball coach at Kansas Wesley. And so let's just get right at it. Let's start with the Sooner Conference. That's where Langston is, uh, also uh, um, Wayland Baptist. So we'll, we'll go through those games individually. But tonight in the uh, Sooner Conference, you can see Central Christian beat Southwestern Christian, oh, uh, Wayland Baptist we'll talk about in a minute. Segu, they beat Oklahoma City. They continue to do well. John Brown, overtime, beat UND, UNT Dallas. Good win for John Brown. And then Texas Wesleyan beat Oklahoma Panhandle. So if we look at the standings now in the sack, uh, Langston, they're 6-0. and We'll talk about them in a minute. Segu's 5-1, John Brown. Science and Arts fell tonight uh, to uh, Wayland Baptist. They're four and two, so that it's still pretty tight. Not really a lot of games yet to really see a clear picture. Uh, in the Langston game, they beat Mid America Christian seventy nine to sixty. Anthony Roy eighteen points six rebounds. Ronald Mitchell nineteen points three rebounds. They go to twelve and zero, uh, and they're going to play Southwestern Christian on Saturday. So speaking of 12 and 0, uh, we're down, here it is, we're down to three unbeaten teams. Grace, Point Park, they went to 14 and 0 today, and Langston, who is 12 and 0. So we're things are starting to shake out. Cumberland's played today as well, but they're 14 and 1. Three unbeatens left. Who's going to remain over the next couple weeks? Wayland Baptist also in the Sooner. They beat Science and Arts. Really good game, 86-77. This was really close down to about two minutes. Uh, in the last two minutes, uh, on the road, uh, Wayland Baptist out-executed the Drovers, and they hit their free throws. The Drovers didn't hit their free throws, uh, and they beat them 86-77. Quentin Coleman, 25 points, four rebounds. Brett Leach, 10 points, eight rebounds. So Wayland Baptist goes to nine and three. And they're going to play Texas Wesleyan this Saturday. Let's take a look at the Mid-South. They're still, uh, they're not playing any uh, conference games yet. So uh, Cumberland's won. I mentioned that. They go to 14-1. and one. We'll talk about that game. Georgetown won big. We'll talk about that. But also Bethel, Tennessee beat Williams Baptist. As I say, they don't, these teams Mid-South doesn't start conference play until, I believe, the 11th. The Georgetown game, they beat Carolina Christian 109-71. Cam Brooks, Cam Brooks Harris, 20 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists. And Rashad Bishop, probably the, one of the most consistent performers there, uh, 22 points, 8 rebounds. So they're going to, as I said, they, they start league play January 11th. I, I think that's the date they all start. I could be off a little bit, but they're going to play Lindsey Wilson on January 11th. They're 12 and two. Also in the mid South Cumberlands, as I said, they beat Johnson 86, 64 JJ Ramey having a great year for Cumberland, 17.6 rebounds. Jonathan Brown, 13 points, three rebounds. Cumberlands is 14 and one. And they're going to play Miami Hamilton this Saturday. Let's take a look at the Red River. Uh, obviously, this is the uh, conference LSU Shreveport's in. They beat Southwest tonight. 
uh, but also also in the conference tonight, to try to get the magnifier up there. Our Lady of the Lake beat North American. Jarvis Christian beat uh, Louisiana Christian by two. Texas College beat LSU Alexandria. LSU Alexandria is really struggling. Xavier won. We'll talk about that, and that, as did LSU Shreveport. Paul Quinn doesn't report their scores. You go to the video, watch it to try to pick up the score. They don't have a scoreboard. They don't have an announcer. So the only thing you can do is, I guess, sit with a scorecard. It's really kind of frustrating, but nevertheless. Also, oh, I want to go back. I want to go to the standings. Sorry, I got t- uh, tied up telling you my pet peeves. So LSU Shreveport in the conference, they're 5-0. and Xavier is 4-1. and And then Jarvis Christian is 5-2 and and really... You know, under that, these teams have some making up to do. Uh, but this looks like it could be the the race. Again, it's early. In that LSU Shreveport game, uh, Southwest, they were out in New Mexico. Southwest didn't post any stats. Uh, but I got a final score. They beat them 93-83. And uh, LSU Shreveport's going to play Paul Quinn on Saturday. LSU Shreveport is 10-1 and going into next Saturday. And Xavier, uh, they beat Huston Tillotson, 78-63. Lance Williams, 16 points, 5 rebounds. And Jaquan Ewing, 14 points, 8 rebounds. Xavier is 8-2 and two now. And they're going to play Our Lady of the Lake on Saturday. We talked about the KCAC last night. You know, big upset. I don't know if it's a huge upset, but a very important upset by Kansas Wesleyan uh, coach Coach Monson's Coyotes, they beat Southwest, handed them their first loss, and uh, we were able to speak to him uh, a few hours after the game. Cascade Hoops Talk, Billy D. Hey, I got uh, Coach Anthony Monson. He's the head men's basketball coach, Kansas Wesleyan. Big win last night over Southwestern. Coach, welcome to the show. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. So, uh, you know, I, I looked at that game – and I, boy, I thought that was a, I thought you guys had a great opportunity. You know, I'm of the belief when a team starts piling up 12 or 11 in, in a row, uh, they become more and more vulnerable every night. What was the state of the team's mind going over there? We've had battles with him over the years. Um, and, and fortunately for us, um, you know, the past couple of times, you know, we've, we've been able to come out on, on the winning side. And so I think, you know, for the guys going into it, it Regardless of what the record was, I, th- I think there was just a lot of confidence knowing that we've had some success against them in the past. And then understanding that, you know, we're already a game down. We dropped a, a one-point loss to Evangel earlier in the year. Yep. Um, didn't have our starting five-man um, for that game. But uh, in understanding that, you know, this was a way for us to get back into the race um, or fall two games back with, with a game in hand for them. Uh, we just knew there was a lot of things at stake. And when you kind of have a veteran team that we've had that's that's been the national term for the past couple of years and had some success there um, and, and wants to get back there, um, you know, it, it put us in a spot where, you know, I, I don't want to say our backs were against the wall, but, like, we knew we had to come out and play a really good game and find a way to win that game to, to kind of get us back to where we wanted to be. And I got to give my guys a lot of credit. Um, Southwestern is one heck of a, a program. Um, there's a reason why they've been successful for so long. Um, their coaching staff and their players mm-hmm. do a tremendous job, and, and we were just able to be a little bit better last night. So talk about, you know, Alex Littlejohn and June, June Murdoch have done a great job for you all season, but Alex Littlejohn last night, 31 points, 13 rebounds. Uh, what a game he had on the road. Uh, talk about his performance. Yeah, I, I mean, Alex just has a knack big games he, he he steps up he's he's done it for three years here and you just kind of knew you know going to this game that you're gonna have to find a way to get the ball to him and, and really step up and make plays um i actually thought he did a tremendous job defensively on andrew o'brien just made him a very high volume shooter last night mm-hmm. um you know and, and kind of did the same thing june did the same thing with kevin um with june playing 40 minutes last night on top of everything else and so um you know i, I thought the guys just you know, those two, they, they've led us all year. They're, they're call, kind of the calming influence on the team. You know, when, when they start off hot or they get things going, everybody else kind of settles in. And, and last night, I mean, we, we put on a, a first half that you probably only get to see maybe <laughs> once a year where you, you hit eight or nine threes to start off the half. And, uh, you know, I'll say this. We had the right shots with the right guys taking the right shots. So 
Um, you know, I'm not surprised they went in, but at the same time, like that typically doesn't happen. But for those guys to do that in, in the magnitude of that game on the road, um, coming off a very, very long break, I mean, it's just you can't say enough about the job they do to, to lead this program. So last night in that last minute of the game, you mentioned Kevin Clark. He hit that three to make it a two-point game. I think there was exactly yeah. one minute to go. Uh, was there ever any panic in your guys? You know, not really. I, I think, you know, we've been there, done that before. Uh, I, and I think, you know, in our guys' mind, the only reason it was a one-point game is because we had went one for four from the free throw line and missed a layup in that stretch. Mm. So I think in, in your mind, it's, you know, we're the reason that it's a you know one-possession game. It's, it's not necessarily them. Uh, which is is a good mindset to have because you feel like you're not panicking then, um, even though they're they're continually put the pressure on you. And so, you know, it was just about getting that ball in bounds and, and going to the free throw line and with some confidence and, and knocking them down. I mean, we, we had done it all all game and we've been pretty good from the free throw line all year. And so, you know, every once in a while you're going to have some hiccups like like we did, and you're going to have them against a team like Southwestern. Like they're just too good to yeah. to roll over or you know just say all right that's it we're done for the night. Um, and so it was it was a heavyweight fight with with two teams throwing haymakers at each other it was a lot of fun to, to coach in that game um, a lot of fun just to watch watch the guys play and uh, you know I think at the end of the day these are two of the, the better teams in our league obviously and I think you know if we both get back to the national tournament I think we can do something there too Kevin Clark and you mentioned Andrew O'Brien boy they're, they're they're those guys are good aren't they yeah I mean we we recruited Kevin really hard. It came down between us and Southwestern and, and he, he ended up at Southwestern and, uh, you know, he's, he's just a special player. And, and when you watch him play, he, he's, he's what every coach wants his players to be. He's tough. He, he doesn't back down. He's got a ton of grit. Um, he makes big plays. Mm-hmm. He knows he's getting everybody's best shot every single night. And, you know, it's, it's, it, you got to be on your, 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 your toes and he's not going to let up. He's relentless um, with, with the basketball and, and Andrew's the same way. And, you know, everybody loves playing with Andrew, I'm sure, because he just loves to get everybody involved and, and, and he's very good at, you know, taking the defense you know, attention and finding open guys. And, and, you know, they surround those guys with a bunch of shooters and, you know, they, they become a handful to guard. And when they start hitting, man, it's, it's tough to stop a team like that. So coach coming up on Saturday, I think probably everybody knows you. You played at Tabor. You coached at Tabor. Uh, you're heading back over there on Saturday. Does that you know you've been away from Tabor for a while? Does that game still have some special significance to you? Yeah, I mean it, it will always be. You know, and, and the game's actually here. I think the game. Oh, that's there right. You're playing actually, in Salina. Yep. Yeah, I, I, the game there is probably a little bit more. Uh, I, I don't know, special, I guess, because you know you go back and you see a bunch of people you haven't seen yeah. for a while. Um, but you know, it, as time's gone on, you know, you, Tabor always have a, a kind of a special place in my heart. You know, you graduate there, you play there, you know, we won some championships there as a player and as an assistant coach and, uh, you know, some really good memories there. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, a home away from home and, uh, you know, you, you never want to lose those guys. And at the same time, like I just have a ton of respect for the, the school and, and everything that, you know, they did for me and, and did everything that, you know, we accomplished while I was there. You know, one more question before I let you go. Alex Littlejohn is 6'6". He's listed at 6'6". How does yeah. he average 12 rebounds a game? You know, I, I'm just a firm believer that there's just some guys who know how to rebound the basketball. Yeah, I agree 100%. And, yep. and, and, and he just has a knack for, you know, the, the Dennis Rodman type, right? Like, he, he just, he knows... He knows where that ball's coming off a lot of times, and he gets himself in a really good position. And I also just think it's a skill and, and, and something that matters to him that doesn't matter to a lot of kids nowadays. You know, the, the coach will be screwing, we need to box out, we need to do this and that, and everybody's yelling you know, back and forth. And But rebounding truly matters to him. You know, being one of the best rebounds in the country, that matters to him. You know, being the best rebounder in the KCAC, that matters to him. And when – when something matters to somebody, like they just take it that much more personal. I think that's what he does. Um, you know, he just wants to be known as that guy, and uh, he wants to do something that a lot of people don't don't want to do. <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, you, you got to give him a lot of credit for kind of being an old school throwback type player. Yeah, I think I think rebounding a lot of it comes down to just desire, as you said, want to do it, got to get the ball. But I think all, some guys just see the re, see the ball, the shot in a different dimension than the rest of us. And they just naturally know where to go. Mason Walters over at Jamestown, he was a great example of that. 
he just was yeah. always where the ball came down. <laughs> always. It was uncanny. I couldn't believe it. And you see other guys like that too. Like you said, they just always know where to be. They can understand where the shot's going to go. And, and then they, they, as you said, they want a rebound as well. You got to just kind of, you got to have that, that, that desire to do something. And he, he just does when it comes to that. And, you know, he loves us in the biggest moments. He, he loves to, to be that guy. Um, him and June, they both do it and they do it so well. Um, and they're both very humble. Uh, you know, I can't even get June to talk half the time. It seems like, <laughs> and, and, and if you actually had sat down with a conversation with Alex, like you, you'd be like, so this is the guy that averages a double double and <laughs> is all American. Like, like it, it just kind of blows you away because they, they, they just don't pass the eye test of what, you know, you think of when you think of players that would average and do what they do. I said, I was just going to ask you that last question, but your one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you is your team is a, a perfect example of, of what I talk about all the time where I view the especially the early top 25 is almost a beauty contest, right? You you were in the sure. top 25, you you lose you drop a couple games and you know, you just kind of drift out of sight and nobody's really paying attention, but you pull up the league standings, which I think are far more important, and boom, you're at the top. Uh yeah. you see that in so many conferences. I I've been doing this now every night. I go through all the conferences and the the teams that are at the top. Sometimes the teams that are high ranked are like I know it's early, but they're in third place. But your team is a great example of that. You you just kind of sneak up on everybody and pop up at the top of the conference. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. We went into the year like knowing uh, we had to have we put together a pretty challenging schedule. Um, you know, we we knew going into it. Uh, you know, we went up to Bellevue to start off the year, and we were we were a little bit banged up when we went up there to start off the year. We had a lot of injuries we were dealing with, and some just you know off court stuff and. You know, we, we, we played a very lazy game against uh, a Dickinson State team who's yeah. actually gone on, and, and they've won some big games. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good. They, in mm-hmm. Rocky Mountain, and uh, and uh, you got to give them a ton of credit. Um, you know, came back the next night, beat Bellevue on their home floor, um, turned around and, and played a Morningside team that was a national tournament team last year that knocked us out in the second round. Um, and, and both of us, you know, returned pretty much everybody and, and found a way to win that game, and then played a Briarcliff team that at the start of the year, my, my goodness, like it was like, who was going to score 30 plus for them every single yeah. night? Uh, oh, maybe 40. And, and I'll be honest, they, they took us to the woodshed. Um, they really did. I mean, I mean, we battled back and everything else, but like, I, I'll give that team a ton of credit. They came in and, and they just, they played a different style that we weren't used to seeing. And then turn around and play William Woods, which was essentially Iowa wrestling, yeah. um, you know, on a neutral floor. And then, go ahead and uh you know finish off with Bruce State a national tournament team last year you know it was a little bit up and down trying to figure out okay you know we weren't used to losing in the non-conference it had been two years since we lost a non-conference game oh wow. the prior two years we were we were six and oh in both years um and I think that kind of that kind of threw us for a little bit of a loop and then you know you get an evangel team who comes in the KCAC uh, which makes five national tournament teams just in our league alone from last year yeah you know, right off the right off the bat in, in KCAC play, and, and we dropped a one point loss there. And so, you know, I think a lot of people looked at it and said, you know, hey, maybe they're not as good as, as they've been. I, I kept telling my guys, we're we might be actually better. We're just playing <laughs> better teams. Exactly. And we're gonna we're gonna figure it out. And you know, I think last night was was you know the point I've been trying to make for a while is nothing's really changed except for we're starting to get our confidence back. And, you know, I think what we went through in, in playing those back-to-back, we played three straight back-to-back uh, weekends. And, and that's just like the opening round of the national tournament. you got to play back-to-back and win those. And so, you know, a lot of this went down to, like, how can we prep ourselves to possibly get past that second round, which is where we, we've been the past two years. And, and you know, you got to play, you gotta play the, the good teams. And with the way the, the rankings are now and the top 25 is kind of meaningless, um, to some extent, because now it's all about RPI, strength of schedule, you know, how your opponents are doing, winning percentage, things like that. When it comes to, you know, national tournament criteria, you know, I just tell their guys like, you know, hang in there. It's going to be all right. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, they're starting to see it. Well, I, I sure appreciate you taking the time again. I want to congratulate you on a big win last night. It made a big splash uh, and uh, good luck as you push your way through that KCAC that that thing is going to be a war it's really starting to bunch up up at the top uh, but you already know that you're ready for that right yeah I mean anytime a league's got five national tournament teams from the year before and uh 
and everybody in our league has at least one win so far. So, I mean, we don't have any, any offers. I mean, there's, it's, there's never an easy night and the coaches are so good in this league. Um, you know, everybody knows everybody and, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, who can, who can top who on that night. I mean, you know, Oklahoma Wesleyan, we, for some reason, we struggle against them and, and Southwestern beats them. And then we play Southwestern and we can beat them, but we can't beat Oklahoma Wesleyan. It's no, like, exactly. You know, exactly. It, the league is, the league is just funny. Um, but there's great players in our league. And I, and I, I'm so proud of the league because I finally feel like it's getting the recognition it's always deserved. Mm. Um, you know, I think for a long time, the KCAC was a league that, you know, was kind of an afterthought to some people. Um, and, and now, you know, sending four plus teams, you know, the past couple of years and, and the success that the Bethels have had getting into the sweet 16, Oklahoma Wesleyan, you know, the past years, I think we've sent four each year and we've gone three and one in the first round. I mean, yeah, you know, we haven't got a team to the, the final four in a while, but you know, we're starting to make a lot of progress and I'm really happy for our league. Well, coach, thank you very much. Like I said, uh, good, good luck uh, facing your alma mater on Saturday. <laughs> I appreciate it. That's uh coach Anthony Monson. He's the head men's basketball coach, Kansas Wesleyan Coyotes. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Hey, thanks a lot to uh, Coach Monson. I really appreciate him giving me the time, uh, especially right after uh, that big game and having to travel back. Thank you, Coach. Uh, let's take a look at the GSAC. They were in action tonight. This is kind. Of, this is the kickoff of uh, the GSAC league. So uh, Ottawa, Ottawa beat Jet. Or, I'm sorry. Oh man. My friends at Jessup are going to get mad at me. Jessup defeated Ottawa tonight. The Masters, we'll talk about that game. They had no trouble with Life Pacific. Vanguard beat Hope International. And then the most competitive game of the night, Arizona Christian beat Menlo. Uh, Menlo's a tough out. I mean, that's a that's a strong, big, strong team, and they're very well coached. Uh, Arizona Christian beat them 68-64. So let's take a look at these games. Back to this Arizona Christian game. They won 68-64. Dennis Flowers, 14.7 assists. Uh, he just seems to get better every week. Uh, Trent Hudgens, Trent Hudgens, uh, 16 points, two rebounds. So they go to 12-3, and three, and they're going to play. They're going to go to Rockland and play Jessup on Saturday. Also, the Masters. Oh, man, they played Life Pacific, and the first half was just brutal. It was a three-point-a-thon. It was a race, a, a foot race, and Life Pacific wasn't winning it. Uh, they finally called off the dogs in the second half, but uh, the Masters was was definitely going to win this game tonight. Caleb Lowry, he had 12 points, 11 rebounds. Ty Harper, 26 points. They go to 12-3. and three. But Saturday, they got a tough test ahead of them. They're going to play Vanguard. Vanguard is a very good team, and they uh, they eat rated teams for lunch. So they're going to be looking for a, another upset. So let's take a quick look at the Southern States. They're in action tonight. Uh, Mobile we'll talk about in a minute. Blue Mountain defeated Point. Uh, Bruton Parker, they beat William Carey tonight. Stillman beat Thomas in uh, 90-86. And then we'll talk about Mobile in just one moment. Going going back to the standings now. This is a this is a conference. They have a few games in. So Tennessee Southern, we talked about this last last night or night before. They're seven and zero. Life is six and one. Mobile is five and two now. Uh, and you see a bunch of teams here at four and two. So that it's starting to shape up there in the southern states. Let's talk about that Mobile game. Uh, they played Middle Georgia State. Here was the recipe. It wasn't that complicated for Mobile. Have a big start, outscore them by 30 points in the first half, and Ezra McKenna go out and get every missed shot. 12 points and 18 rebounds for Ezra McKenna. Trent Moy, 23.6 rebounds. They Well, they weren't up by 30 at half. They were up by, what is that, 25 uh, but they just got a fast start they just just put the pedal to the metal and uh, like I say Ezra McKenna missed got every missed shot out there they go to 11 and 3 and Mobile is going to play Bruton Parker on Saturday a couple a couple conferences don't everybody in in the uh, top 25 but they were in action tonight Point Park let me hit the magnifier 
Point Park is 14 and 0. They're unrated. 87-69 they beat Midway. Shawnee State 2021 national champion. They beat I Indiana Southeast 79-75. And IU East, they've had a they've struggled a little bit this season and I'm sorry they just took it out on Miami Middleton. <laughs> 108-46. They, they left no doubt. Uh, let's take a look at the standings in the River States. So Point Park, they're 4-0 in conference. St. Mary's of the Woods having a very good season. They're 4-0. West Virginia Tech and Shawnee State. Uh, you know, IU Kokomo's got a really good team. I, I expect them to make a run there in the River States. But some of these other teams are, are uh, starting to, to fall back. Also, uh, the AAC, the Appalachian Conference, where I talked C Cumberlands, uh, Bryan beat Bluefield, and Pikeville won again, 99-94. Uh, they beat Montreat. So, again, let's go over to the standings. They These guys have played a, a ton of conference game games. Uh, Pikeville continues. They're setting the pace. Columbia International and Union are right behind them. But these three are, I mean, who's going to trip first? But Pikeville won tonight, and they continue to set the pace in the AAC. Hey, I really appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, tell all your friends and neighbors about NEI basketball. Tell them to tune in on uh, Twitter or Spotify or on YouTube and listen to uh, Billy D stammer around about cast, uh, NEI hoops every morning. Uh it's a, it's a great game. I love it. I love the fact that uh, I can do this. And thank you very much for everybody's support. And you guys have a great evening. I'm on the road, and I'm going to watch basketball this weekend, and I'll be back Monday morning. Thank you very much for supporting our podcast. Please like and subscribe. Get out to your local NAI school because NAI basketball is the best entertainment value in America. 